few challenges getting started, but hopefully this time it will work. So welcome to Thinking Tuesday, and thank you for being patient with me today. A few challenges getting started. But it's nice to see you here again. Thank you so much for joining me. It's always a pleasure to be here with you at noon at on Tuesday. As you know, this is our little oasis at noon on Tuesday, when we carve out a few minutes of our day to check in with our thoughts, check in with our thinking, to see how is it serving us, and then be humble and courageous enough to uh, commit to make those changes that would put us more in control of our lives. Because if you change your thinking, if you change your thinking, you can certainly change your life. I do believe that so strongly so strongly if you change your thinking you can change your life because all the root of our actions is in our thinking at the root of our actions is our thinking what we think impacts how we feel and how we feel drives us to action or non-action so when we don't act we're still acting <laughs> Right? So we've got to guard our thoughts. We've got to guard our thoughts, cultivate thoughts that are life affirming and growth producing. Those are two key words, life affirming and growth producing or growth promoting. And that's why we at Thinking Tuesday have adopted the slogan that reminds us that your mind is a garden and your thoughts are the seeds. And you can grow flowers or you can grow weeds. It's always your choice. So if you are listening to this message live or the recorded version, I know that you're trying to achieve uh, uh, these self-affirming thoughts to cultivate these self-affirming life and growth promoting thoughts, thoughts. So thank you for being here. Thank you for listening to the uh, recording. If you're not uh, listening to it live, Thank you for being here on Thinking Tuesday. I feel compelled today to continue to accept and to expect that the peace you seek is already within you. I just feel compelled to continue talking about that because it is so simple in some ways, even though I know that it is not easily attainable, at least not in the beginning. It's something that you have to practice intentionally. But the peace that we seek is already in us. With all the chaos and confusion in the world, sickness and violence, it is even more important that we develop more self-mastery by practicing becoming more aware and taking responsibility for what we are feeling. Don't push it off on other people. When you hear someone say, or when you hear yourself say, oh, you made me feel this way. You, Nobody makes us feel any way. That's a choice that we have. So it's important for us to begin to, to develop some more self-mastery by practicing more, uh, becoming aware of the actions that we take. Because as you do, you realize that people and circumstances cannot control you without your permission. You have total control of that, but we've lost our way and we allow external things and people to dictate how we feel and how we behave. It is an inward journey worth taking to try to create this self-mastery and as you do, you will develop more awareness of how much individual control you have. And I have a, a big smile on your face, on my face because I know it's true because I've experienced it and I continue to try to practice that. And that, my friends, can be the most liberating feeling when you realize that you don't have to react to everything that's going on around you. 
we can choose how and if to react. But remember, remember it takes time and practice, daily intentional practice. Sometimes you might be ready to do that and you get distracted and you find yourself back on that old, old track again, but you can always bring yourself back. So be patient with yourself. It takes time and daily, daily practice. When you use the external factors of the chaotic life that you see around you to explain your inner state of mind and justify your actions, then you lose touch with who you are, who you truly are, and who you were meant to be. You become a hostage, really, to your environment instead of being the host of the peace that you are seeking or and deserving of. So be a host of the peace that's already within you and not be the hostage to your environment. Although it might sometimes feel very difficult to break the negative cycle that you might find yourself in because we do find ourselves in those negative cycles, we're human. We're not perfect, but we're always seeking perfection. If it's an argument, a uh, potential road rage, as we see so much on the roads today, a financial crisis, which many people are in, whatever that may be, you have the ability to interrupt that negative cycle of thinking by changing your thought process. That's something only you can do. No one can do that for you. Taking a deep breath, Taking a deep breath and diverting your thoughts from the current disturbance, just punching a hole in it for a minute. Take a deep breath and intentionally choosing to be still and calm. I know sometimes it's very, very easy to stay in that mode because our adrenaline is pumping. Uh, we, we feel justified. We, 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 we feel that we have to continue on the road, we have to make a point. What is that worth? What is it worth? Is it worth the stillness and the calm that you can achieve? That can make all the difference and avoid getting physically hurt, perhaps, or feeling emotionally wounded or vengeful making a decision that might only bring you temporary relief, but with long-term problems. So it's not the immediate relief we're seeking, even though that might feel good, but we're seeking long-term solutions. No one can make you lose your control without your consent. That's a personal choice and a personal decision. Nothing that you, do, that you do is done without your consent or approval. No one can make you feel anything. It might be a familiar feeling to you, but you choose how you feel. So make sure that when you make that decision, that it will be ultimately beneficial and healthy for you and keeps you in control and not being controlled by external circumstances. It feels so good when we can blame someone else, when we can say, oh, that situation caused me to feel this way, or she made me feel this way, he made me do this. No, we got to get away from that kind of thinking. You choose, you choose how you respond. You have that control. You are so powerful, so powerful. During these times when you're confronted with those kinds of situations, it, it, it's helpful. It's helpful to employ some self-talk. If there's not someone around who can help guide you away from the chaos or the difficulty that you might be facing, you might be alone and you don't have anyone there at the moment to help you get out of that cycle. So self-talk is very important. 
You can have thoughts or you can say things such as, I have the ability to stay calm and centered no matter what goes before me or what's going on around me. So practice statements such as that to get you centered, to de-escalate the situation. I have the ability to stay calm and centered no matter what goes on before me or what's going on around me. You know, recently, I, while I'm on vacation, uh, there was a tragic drowning of two young men in the air where I spend a lot of time. And it was very, very difficult not to become overcome with emotion, even though I didn't personally know them. But just being in the familiar surroundings, uh, uh, knowing the details, um, it was also the talk of the town and very difficult to converse with anyone without any mention of it. And we know that grief is natural. We all grieve, but we all grieve differently. But I found that I began to get caught up in some obsessive thinking about the situation. I was grieving, but I was having a lot of thoughts about it. And I had to intentionally, this is when I had to stick a pin in there. I had to intentionally divert my thoughts so that I could return to some balance and have some modicum of comfort. So it's something that we can do in our daily travels when we're confronted by a difficult situation, when we need to divert ourselves from something that can take us far afield from where we need to be. Or when we are prone to act in ways that's not going to be beneficial to us. So awareness, that self-awareness is so important. So while it is normal and natural to react to things that confront us, we can do so from a standpoint of knowing that we can find peace even when we f uh, face uh, difficulty. And that's such a liberating thought. We can find peace by turning within and knowing that ultimately we are in control of how we respond. It's not about the short-term gain or the short-term relief, but how we can control how we respond. So as the saying goes, and you've probably heard it, I think I've mentioned it here, that life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you respond. So look within, look within, practice looking within. This helps you to get to know yourself also. You can't run from yourself, even though we try sometimes. You can't run from yourself. You shouldn't run from yourself. You need to know you. We need to know who we are. So when we look within, the peace that we're seeking is waiting there to be discovered. Isn't that good news? I know it's always good news for me. So there are many, many ways to find and practice that peace, such as prayer, coaching, counseling, speaking to a trusted friend or loved ones. But I invite you to begin this inner journey, however you decide to, but you may reach out to me for a complimentary consultation through my website, drcherylburton.com. And while you're there, just check out the other services that I offer. I want to thank you again for joining me. And as I always do, please share this message with someone who you feel can benefit from it. All my previous Thinking Tuesday messages are stored on my YouTube channel, Cheryl Burton, Thinking Tuesday. You can find them there. And while you're there, please subscribe so that I can continue bringing these uplifting messages to you. So I thank you again for listening. I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday at noon when we can spend some more time in this thinking oasis that helps us to become more aware of how we think, how is it serving us, and then if we discover that our thinking patterns are not serving us well, then we can be bold enough
courageous enough to change our thinking pattern. Take care. It was great seeing you or speaking to you again. I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday at noon for Thinking Tuesday. Bye for now.